Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I know it's been a little while. Um, yesterday I was feeling pretty depressed. <laughs> I was feeling a lot like I just don't have any energy and I don't have any endurance or, or stamina. And as a result, I feel like I've been lacking follow through on a lot of projects that I've you know, have worked a little bit on and um, haven't really been participating in zine things the way that I want to or, or finishing artistic projects and whatever. I was just, I was feeling really down and I was starting to think it's like, oh, you know, getting kind of doomer-y and like, you know, I'm never going to be able to do what I want to do and whatever. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend, Sean, pointed out, because I was, I was thinking, it's like, oh, this is sort of my fault, that it's like, I just don't have endurance or stamina or whatever. And he pointed out, like, no, you're just, it's a matter of your expectations. Like, you're expecting way too much of yourself, and you are basically, like, piling a whole bunch onto your plate, and then feeling guilty for having leftovers, <laughs> is basically what it came down to. And at first when he said that, I was just kind of like, oh, you know, I guess you're right, but just in my head kind of thinking like, no, that's stupid, like, this is still my fault somehow, or, or you know, it's, it's a bigger problem than that, and it's like, mm, I don't know. So this morning I decided to go through my uh, work in progress drawer that I have, and yeah, no, Sean's totally right. <laughs> I have so many things in progress and I'm like expecting myself to finish all these, fi finish like so many things. I'm not even going to show you all of it. Okay. I'm just going to share some of my work in progress zines, as in zines that I've created to differing levels of completion. <laughs> and, um, all of these are things that I have been working on that I have not, uh, finished. And yeah, I think, I think that looking at all of this and looking at this big pile, not even just the zines, but like knowing I also have all these other pro art projects that I have at varying levels com of completion. Many of them are complete and I just haven't, um, done the you know, finishing level of putting something on my website or sharing it on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, um, or sending it somewhere or putting it for sale if I wanted to, like that, you know, I made it and it's just still here. I kind of consider that to also be a part of the completion is sort of like, like deciding the fate of the piece, if that makes sense, Mo moving it at on somehow or deciding to keep it very intentionally. Um, but the point is like all the stuff that I've been working on, it's just ended up in boxes and drawers and I haven't really shared a lot of it. And some of them are complete and some of them are not. And it's like, it's ridiculous. And seeing all this, yeah, it looks like a really full plate. <laughs> and I hope that it'll help you, the viewer, in sort of seeing that everybody has works in progress and that just because something hasn't been a hundred percent finished for one does not mean that it's abandoned. And for two, um, does not mean that the work that you've done on it so far is suddenly invalidated. Uh, it's there and it's ready for you at any point that you want. <laughs> so, um, I don't really have a, a super, uh, I don't have an order for this. Uh, I just have a bunch of crap on my desk. It's not crap. It's lovely work in progress. Okay. So this little, uh, set of illustrations, uh, is part of a zine idea that I've had for a really long time where, uh, these are illustrations, just, you know, pen and ink of flowers. And each of these flowers are like a different type that has a meaning in the Victorian language of flowers. And so my idea was to tell a story through flowers that these two characters are exchanging to e between each other, like sending each other flowers to sort of tell, uh, a, have a conversation through these flowers. And so each of the, um, each of the flowers here, um, 
ignore this top part. That's from like a previous project that I just used the cardstock for. But yeah, like each of these flowers has a different meaning. And I, so I have text that is just the meaning of the flower directly pulled from a Victorian flower meanings book from the, you know, Victorian era. Um, and ultimately this will come together as like a, as a folded mini zine where on one side it'll have the flowers that one of the characters sent. And then if you open it up and re and push it together from the other side, it'll have the flowers that the other character sent. Um, and this has been a work in progress for literally like three years now. Um, and I still think it's a really cool idea and I'm actually, I'm pretty proud of some of these illustrations. Like I'm not, it, I'm not, it's not an issue of the illustrations. It's just, you know, I haven't finished it, <laughs> but that's okay. That is, I still believe in my project here and it will get finished at some point. Um, yeah. This next one, just sort of continuing the flower theme, is I've got this little stack that started out as just a single collage of um, flower stuff because I got this book from a thrift store, uh, like a big art photo book thing of gardens, and uh, I just really liked the images and I wanted to use some of them. And so this... Here, let me show them one at a time. The idea behind this was basically to be like a regular folded zine, but hamburger style instead of hot dog. Um, that's so American to call it that instead of like mountains and valleys or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and so they're, you know, collages that have a sort of musing text about uh, gardening and my relationship with gardening and, and plants in general. And so like this one, the text says, I plan to continue, I plan to continue to complain about my lack of gardening space. And I also plan to continue to do nothing about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I have, let's see, I actually have quite a few of these done. I've got, you know, quite a few pages at, most of them are complete. Some of them need text. Uh, but yeah, like, like I'm, I'm all, you could say I'm almost done with it, uh, but I'm not done with it. <laughs> so yeah, that's another one that I think I just need like a couple more pages, like, or like one more page or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't need that much more happening. I have quite a bit done on that, but that, that zine is still in progress. <laughs> Set these over here. All right. This one. <laughs> this one has been in progress for kind of an embarrassingly long time. And the reason in particular that this one is embarrassing is because I asked my friend Nina to do the cover for the zine like a year and a half ago or something. Is that right? Or was it, a, is it, a, was it only at the beginning of this year? No, I think it literally has been like, <laughs> I think it's been like a year and a half since Nina did the cover for me and I just haven't finished the zine or followed up with Nina on like, you know, putting the text on the cover to finalize it and whatever. And it's really, I'm sorry. Like it's really embarrassing, but, um, this one I did pick up again recently to try and finish. And so this is unfair maiden number four, which is my Persian series. Um, and I know that this is old because I have since released Unfair Maiden number five. <laughs> Despite the fact that I never finished number four. And this is the Riot Girl themed issue. And so I've got like this big Riot Girl playlist in here. I've got this Persine Diary thing. I've got this whole thing, which is like a, it's a, a whatever article whatever, whatever you're going to call it, it was a section within the zine titled We're Not Back. That's about, um, you know, the fact that these, this DIY scrappy creative culture has always existed, despite the fact that a lot of people lately are like, oh, zines are coming back. Oh, so nineties. It's just fucking pissing me off. Um, I've got this showing off my, uh, 
punk riot girl jacket, which on the back has painted, I'm such a rebel girl, I'm a boy. <laughs> um, which now does not fit me anymore, <laughs> because I grew out of the jacket before we finished the scene. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so I have some, I have more parts on it, and it's just, like, I never, I never finished it. So, I think this is the one that I really want to actively try to focus on to finish, because I really only have, let's see, one, two, I've got, like, two pages and, like, a small portion of an article to finish, and then to contact Nina about, like, finalizing the cover, and that's literally it. Um, besides, I suppose that's not literally it. That's it for the, for this component, but then there's scanning and arranging and printing and publishing. And <laughs> I think sometimes I kind of downplay how much work that aspect really is, uh, which I shouldn't do that because then of course I'm going to have these expectations like, oh, well, why haven't you done this already? It's so easy. And it's like, it's work, it's time, it's energy. So, um, Anyway, but I do really want to try and finish this Riot Girl issue, and lately I've just been in kind of the Riot Girl mood. I've been listening to the many of the songs that are on this playlist, you know, in here, so I think that's what I'm going to try and focus on. Um, these two, I think originally I was thinking maybe I'd include them in the Riot Girl zine, but I'm thinking these are now gonna just be the starting pages for like a different zine which would end up being Unfair Maiden 7 because I kind of already have Unfair Maiden 6 in the works and these wouldn't totally fit in that but you know I did just make these pages randomly relatively recently and I like them a lot I fucking I love this page so much and I really love this one it's simple but it's it's really cute I think um, I'll just read this one to you. It's, a uh, cartoon with these two young ladies making some cakes and sandwiches, and the caption that I wrote says, I swear to fucking God, Becky, I'm not giving up cakes and cookies and devoting myself to the Church of Treadmill just because of my bitch mother's unexamined fat phobia. Um, projecting much? <laughs> In a persine. God forbid. Anyway. So, um, that's one big and one small work in progress scene. Um, let's see what else I have. Uh, just different levels of in progress. Not everything is, is finished that level. I also have some ideas that have just been vaguely written about. Um, this one is that, like, I've had this idea for, uh, a zine titled My Whimsical Gothic Dreams, which would be just kind of about, um be like vaguely witchy, vaguely gothic, you know, whims whimsical gothic. Um, and so like, here's some ideas for content that I had, that I had for it, which would be like, uh, I have this poem that I wrote a while ago, like in 2020, that is called witchcraft is a poem. And I wanted to include that in the zine at some point, having something about, um, I don't need something sold to me. Like the idea that aesthetics are part of the human nature of hunting and gathering and creating art by arrangement and collection and collaboration of certain things in the way that we would often consider things to be like an aesthetic, like my aesthetic is whimsigoth or whatever. Um, I think that is actually kind of a beautiful thing that, that is, a uh, created, that is essentially like a collage. It's, it's sort of the, the part of the human nature of like, um, collection and, and creation, but the, the whole point and the, like the, what I wrote here is I don't need Vogue to tell me about it. I don't need places to try and sell me based on these aesthetics. You know what I mean? Um, I think that some people, especially in the punk community, get kind of like, you know, dismissive of the concept of aesthetics things like oh it's just like a capitalist instagram thing and it's like i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing i think that it's a, a form of art i think that the way in which companies try to uh <laughs> co-opt forms of art that is the problem uh anyway 
I got, like, a bunch of other lists, like, appreciating circadian rhythms, uh, fables are filled with death, uh, the wizard tower, a place of power and magic, isolated, cozy, uh, I wrote something that says, my chocolate falls to the bottom of my cereal bowl, <laughs> so we, like, you know, a list of zine ide ideas for this zine that I feel like all kind of, you know, I would put this into a zine, um... But yeah, it's gonna be a little while, because it's only at this point. But that doesn't mean that the ideas are invalid. I really, I do like these ideas, I want to see them come to life. Um, I guess this is also a page that I would potentially include either in that or a, a, another zine, which is called Don't Talk to Me About PTSD, Gretchen Jones, who is a designer from Project Runway, which I was rewatching. That's a whole thing. trucks going by. So this next in progress scene I'm also a little bit embarrassed about because it's a collaboration scene and I feel like any time that there's a collaboration scene uh, that I haven't really fully finished or whatever I just feel like I kind of have dropped the ball for someone else. I don't think it's a big deal because the person I'm collaborating with um, has definitely had her own things that she's been working on and I... I know that she understands. It's just one of those things where it's like I start to make a big deal about it in my head. It's like, oh, why haven't I done this and this? Why haven't I reached out? Um, so this is something that we started at the beginning of this year. <laughs> and I don't know how much really I want to show just because, again, like, although this content is mine, our zine together is not exclusively mine. But anyway, just to give you some of the vibes of it, it's it's like a very witchy zine about sort of witchcraft and and creativity, I guess. Um, I suppose it's not exactly witchcraft, it's just like vaguely witchy things. Um, I do really like some of the stuff that I've written for it. Like this part is called uh, the Magnum Opus and it's sort of talking about the relationship between the uh, use of the word magnum opus in alchemy and uh, in referring to artists' work, um, which I really, I'm just, I'm really proud of it. And it's like, God damn it, I gotta finish this. I gotta like try, I gotta get this out there. We also have a section on human design, which is very much uh, her, she introduced me to the concept of human design. And so this is kind of like my uh, first impressions, I guess, of human design. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that I really want to finish and that maybe it would be a good time for me to try and reach out and get it together, but for now, it is still in progress. <laughs> this one's a bit of a smaller zine. It's, uh, basically, I mean, it's, I feel like it's basically done, um... Kind of. So this would be a mini zine. Uh, it would. I can't entirely fold it, but you know, it would. It would be a mini zine, and the whole idea is like zine culture. It just says what he, what it is here. Zine culture and academic culture are fundamentally opposed, and this is the idea of like. Um, I've been reading a lot of things that are sort of like advice for teachers about how to use zines in your lessons, and unfortunately a lot of the advice that I've been reading seems to uh, be encouraging or at least not rejecting the idea of using zines as assignments, and I don't like that, <laughs> and I think that's sort of... Uh, um, it's almost like regardless of how it's graded, I just I just feel like it gets at this central problem, which is that academic culture in general is not the same as zine culture, and it's not something that really can um, overlap in the way that they, the, in the way that people want it to sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like in a way there has to be a certain sense of collaboration and it's impossible to have that collaboration when one of the institutions has a lot more power than the other. Um, and academic institutions do have a lot of, of power. <laughs> and um, that includes libraries. And that's something that I've been working on in my in library school, too. But anyway, so this just kind of came as like a big frustrated get it all down thing. And 
I suppose in theory, all I would need to do is a cover and back cover, although I also kind of want to do a little write-up that would be on the back side uh, when you open it up that would have a little bit more information about the context of what I'm actually talking about. Um, I don't know. Like, I think, I think the, the, I'm glad that I made this because I think that it got a lot of frustrations that I had out on paper. And that is like the central point that I had. And now it's just an issue of, okay, do I really want to publish this? And if I don't, then why not? And if I do, then for what purpose? Like, is this, is the zine meant to, um, share frustration with fellow zinesters or is it meant more as an actual, you know, honest explanation for teachers? I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway, this is another in progress scene that I have <laughs> a little lower priority, I think, uh, in my uh, stack here. Okay, um, this one, how am I going to show this? This one's a little bit tough to show because some of them are cut in half and some of them are not. Um, I usually end up cutting all my zines in half, like, like all my pages in half like this so that I can arrange them for print. But sometimes if I feel like it's going to mess with the uh, creation aspect or mess with the composition or mess with the collage that I'm doing or whatever, then I'll scan it and then I'll cut it digitally. So I have a couple of these that are full size and then a couple of these that are smaller. Um, so here's one page, which is kind of the concept of like, uh, it's actually a sort of a zine response to a zine called Schoolyard Mythologies by Ash. I'll link that. Um, which is an amazing little mini zine. I love it so much. Uh, and so I was kind of inspired to think about like magical things that I believed in as a kid that, um, I don't necessarily now. And it's not just like, Oh, I believed in fairies and kind of ge in general, but it's like specific ways that it played out like schoolyard mythologies and is like, a, you know, the little, <laughs> the little things that you believed in. Anyway, so this whole thing is like kind of talking about when I was a kid, I had a solid, you know, amount of time. I think pro like a summer when I was a hundred percent convinced that I was a werewolf. And, and this sort of talks about why I think that was important to me. Anyway, so, <laughs> so there's that, that would be in the scene. There's also this little, uh, collage, which I just really love these images. It's from a manga called Dolls. Um, and I don't really want to just say the text out loud because it's a little bit depressing, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's that. I got the whole, the whole zine issue would be unfair. This was Unfair Maiden 6, the sad goth issue. So yeah, there's sad stuff in it. Um, I've got this, which is the opening to a section on, um, the big green monster of money and just talking a little bit about my relationship with money. Um, I've got some just random collage text musing kind of things. I've got, you know, this section, which is like a message from my dad through tarot, uh, and, and missing my dad. Uh, I've got, let's see, another sad thing. I've got walking through a panic attack. I've got, uh, this, which is less sad. It's just kind of about goth aesthetics and things. So anyway, I have quite a few pages for that. And I think the problem is I, I, uh, didn't necessarily have a clear, how do I say this? I did not start working on this zine with the intention of this is going to be the next Unfair Maiden zine. And so as a result of that, I feel like I don't have an end point in mind. So I think what I need to do is arrange this, see how many pages I have, see how many pages I would need left and what could possibly fit in those pages. And that's how I could finish that one. Um, but 
for now, it is a work in progress. <laughs> okay, um, not too many more. Uh, there's this one, which I literally just started, and right now all I have is the images. But the idea is it would basically be about homesickness and um, the the idea that for me a lot of homesickness is actually part of my maladaptive um, escapist coping mechanism of just like wanting to run away when I'm feeling stressed or scared in life that like I just want to get up and move and start a new and a new place. But of course I know it's not actually the place that's giving me issues. It's that I have depression. It's that I have all these other things. And so it's going to follow me wherever I go. Um, and like, I know that it's just, <laughs> you know, sometimes I can't help it. Sometimes I'm, I'm here and I love where I live now. I love Massachusetts and I'm just sitting here mission like, man, I wish I was, in New Mexico, which, you know, I do have some fond memories of New Mexico, but, like, I don't really want to live there any more than I want to live here. Um, so I sort of have a lot of ideas for that, but I haven't written anything for it yet. These images are all just from a couple of books that I got at a book swap, which was, uh, again, like, big art books that I could cut down to size for zine images. And so one was about, like, Santa Fe style, one was a Colorado travel book, all this sort of thing. I love this. Is the, this would be the cover. Isn't this so fucking cool? Um, I really like it. And so then on the inside, I've just, you know, picked some large images for my uh, backgrounds. And then it would be sort of a single article, whatever, single um, written piece that would be pasted over these images. So I have it, I have it done. I have it ready to size. No, I just have to actually write it. <laughs> um, which I haven't super been in the mood to do because I'm worried that it's going to end up kind of depressing, like necessary depressing, but depressing in, in a cathartic way. It's just, you know, in like a shadow work way. And so when you're already feeling depressed, it's maybe not the best time to be doing it, at least for me. Uh, so that's in progress. And I think that's pretty much all the stuff that I have on paper that I can show you. I do have um, two other zines that I have in progress. One of them I'm actually nearly done with. And uh, that is a diary zine that I wrote uh, in the weeks leading up to my birthday, which was on October 10th. And... So yeah, it's been a <laughs> it's been a little while, um, but basically I wrote one page every day, and uh, it's like a little quarter size zine, and it's it's just kind of like a diary style writing some random things that come to me, and um, you know I'm proud of it. I think it's really cute, and I just uh, I I have it all scanned. I have it imposed and ready for printing. I just haven't done a test print, and at some point I'd have to actually send it out to the print shop that I use to photocopy it, and then they send me back the photocopies, and I cut and assemble it, and then do something with it. So it's it's kind of weird. It's like I have the zine done, but I don't have a zine in my hands. <laughs> so again, like that stuff is work. I need to not be so hard on myself expecting like, what do you mean you haven't done that part? It's like, that's hard work. Of course I haven't done it yet because it's like, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not just nothing. Um, anyway, so I've got, I've got that. And then <laughs> the next scene, because, you know, for whatever reason, I was inspired to start this zine, um, <laughs> inspired to start the zine about uh bad Christmas movies because something that I actually really like is watching a bunch of the really bad cheesy made for TV Christmas movies 
and I found out that my the app that my library subscribes to for checking out a lot of digital materials, which your library also likely does, Hoopla, they have this thing called a binge pass, which basically you use one of your allotted uh, borrows for the month. You have usually 10, it depends on the library. Um, and for you use one of your borrows, and then for a week you have unlimited access to Hallmark On Demand, <laughs> including a plethora of Christmas movies, probably more than I could ever watch in a lifetime unless I made it my full-time job. And so, and of course, many of these have just the best titles ever. And so I'm going through these and I thought it's like, oh, I'll watch them. And I'm writing my notes and reviews and thoughts on each one. And I thought it would just be a really fun, funny zine to make. And I was thinking of doing it kind of like an advent calendar of doing like, uh, you know, 20, do advent calendars have 24 or 25? I can't remember, but you know, doing like <laughs> one a day leading up to Christmas kind of thing. Um, and I think I still do really want to focus on that just as a way of getting me into the spirit, but I want to be careful because I don't want to end up, um, getting frustrated that it's not, uh, finished fast enough for my liking. Like, basically, I don't want to... I want to make sure that I keep in mind, okay, it's totally fine to work on something as I'm inspired to. And in fact, that's part of why I want to keep my art as a hobby rather than a career is because if it was a career, then I would have deadlines and I don't want to do that to myself because I want to have the flexibility to work on things as I'm inspired to. Um, but at the same time, I need to acknowledge that it's like, okay, if I'm going to work on it as, an, as I'm inspired to, then at the point where I am no longer inspired to work on it, I need to say, that's okay. I need to be willing to, I need to, well, I need to either be willing to let it go, or I need to push through and set myself an arbitrary deadline, which can be helpful sometimes. I mean, that's why I have all these in-progress things, is because there haven't been any deadlines, and that's how I'm at the point where I just am like in a tizzy feeling like I haven't done anything. Um, but yeah, I, I think I just, being a little bit more aware of what I'm putting on my plate is going to be the main thing. And, um, trying to recognize that if I really want to finish something or if I want to bring something to completion, then I have many opportunities to do that. I have these in progress things that are, ready for me to pick up whenever I wish. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I got. And, um, I guess maybe if you guys are interested, I'll do a follow up of some of the things that I actually have completed over the last, however long it's been since I posted six months, maybe. Um, I do have, I have some books that I've been making that have, uh, you know, some art inside. I have a lot of collages and things that I've been doing. So, you know, I'm sure I have plenty to share. Um, but also I am forever moving forward. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this, uh, makes you feel a little better about not having completed anything and it's a reminder for you and for me that, uh, in progress does not mean abandoned or not good enough. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys later. Bye.